Okay, the next problem was the widget one from the mid from the chapter five test, and uh, you know this is a problem that you should not have a difficult time solving, and you know it's repeated, and I'm gonna go ahead and solve it right now. So it says, widget company runs a small factory that makes several types of nuts and bolts. The they employ factory workers that are paid one of three hourly rates depending on skill level. Okay, let's just get cracking. <coughs> We're gonna do this public class widget, okay? And we know this method is gonna run. Um, let's finish reading the specification. Uh, blah blah blah. So they they make one of three hourly rates, and each worker can work 40, 45, or 50 hours per week. All hours over 50, over 40. Remember, we changed that during the test. All hours over 40 are paid at double time. Write a payroll program that will calculate the gross pay for a factory worker, hours worked, and hourly pay will be entered from the keyboard. So we need a scanner to ask for hours worked and hourly pay. And the program should then display the hours worked, the hourly pay, the regular pay, and the overtime pay. Okay. Uh, what do we know this class needs to have? It's going to run some stuff, we're going to execute code, so public static void main string he has a main method string array arguments all right <coughs> and let's create a scanner in equals new scanner system dot in nice and then uh, let's just uh, get the stuff that we need to get from the user system uh, out uh, print line enter Let's capitalize on <coughs> enter hours worked. Okay, and then um, int hours equals in dot next int. Then system dot out dot print line. Now we're gonna ask for the pay. Enter hourly wage and uh, double wage equals in dot next double. Okay. All right. And then we do if hours less than forty. Actually. If hours greater than 40, now we're going to do some stuff down there. But let's just uh, declare a couple of variables here. Uh, so we have um, we're going to have a uh, double <laughs> regular pay equals zero and double overtime pay equals zero. Or we can do it th this way. This this is one way you signal Java that, that the thing that you input is a double, and another way to do it is this way. Okay, so if ours is greater than 40, what do we do? Overtime pay equals ours minus 40 times 2, because you pay double for overtime, times wage. Okay? And um let's just handle that that same case that we handled in the previous uh program if uh ours less than zero we do regular pay equals zero um now we just uh actually we don't even have to do that because we already said it before so if ours all we need to do now is our if ours is greater than zero um and let's put an else here else so if you know we start out testing if ours is greater than 40 no we assign the overtime pay else meaning it's not greater than 40 um we test if it's greater than zero because if it's not greater than zero we don't want to do anything we just want to leave it at zero like we set it up here you know we set it up here we left it uh, uh, both at zero and we want to leave it that way if, if they enter negative hours. So else if hours greater than zero, regular pay. And at this point, we know that um, 
our C is certainly not greater than 40 because if it were greater than 40 this executes and all this stuff in this else doesn't execute okay so actually I'm overcomplicating this stuff with the uh, I wouldn't even expect you to do this so this stuff you know testing for the zero case is overcomplication and waste of time so I'm gonna take it out regular pay equals um, so I'm just gonna have an else here you know meaning that ours is not greater than 40 regular pay blah 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 include this dang I really cannot think today for some reason so we're just gonna handle the whole thing in this block if ours is greater than 40 we do overtime pay is that and regular pay is 40 times ours and I keep trying to come up with the the most elegant solution like a freaking nerd and I end up um, messing up and wasting time <coughs> so if ours is greater than 40 we do that else we just do you know regular pay is ours times wage we ain't gotta worry about any overtime and now we're done so we just need to print what we need what it asks us to print system dot out dot print line uh, hours worked hourly pay regular pay for 40 hours and the overtime pay ours worked plus ours plus regular pay plus wage plus uh, okay and since Java ignores spaces I just entered that <laughs> I mean I in inserted a new line after that plus and then we have a comma wage um, regular pay plus uh, regular pay this is our variable and finally we have comma o overtime pay plus overtime uh, time pay mm, and let's have a period there in the end and the semicolon okay and we're gonna go to NetBeans and create our class widget widget okay and uh, what's happening here did I forget what did I forget overtime pay overtime pay blah 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 oh yep I forgot this plus right here it happens man it happens to everybody so now we execute and we cancel that if there's errors oh yep the error was the import control shift I normally I hit control shift I right as I type and it, and it underlines in red so that's why I'm forgetting to do it right now okay so we move down to our output and stuff so we enter the hours worked uh, let's say that the hours worked is uh, 50 uh, enter hourly wage this guy gets paid he's uh, an accountant he's paid 180 bucks an hour and then uh, regular pay is 180 well, I mean that's kind of a misleading output right there regular pay regular pay but whatever I mean whatever you know you did it, this program is done correctly that's what counts hours work was 50 regular pay is 180 per hour uh, the paycheck was 2000 and the overtime pay was 3600 that is it for problem number four or five whatever it was um, let's see problem that was four <coughs> all right I'm just gonna go ahead and do problem five in the same video um, let's see a program will ask the user to enter a month and uh, it's going to be one for January, two for February. Okay, all that jazz. Okay. Goodness. A program will ask that user to enter a month, and it's going to be an int, and then print the number of days in the month. Remember, 
30 days has September. That's some awesome grammar right there. April, June, and November. All the rest have 31 except February. It's 28 days for February. So let's just follow the instructions right here. You know, uh, implement the class month. First, the first thing. Uh, public class month. Okay. Uh, write the constructor which will be passed the month as an integer. Public month int month. Okay. All right. And then um, write the method get days, which will return the number of days. Okay. Um, let's just call it. This we're gonna have a field in month, and we're gonna set the field here. Month. Let's call it month num. Month num. So the no month number. And then th we're gonna set the field month num equals to the parameter that get that got passed into the constructor month month. All right. And now we're gonna write our method. Public. Is it what method get days which will return the number of days. So you know what's our syntax? What's our syntax for methods? All right. We're we all know this by heart. right so what's this access level public you know static is the the static modifier or not void return type main method name so access level we don't need the static for other methods so for now certainly not for this one so access level return type name arguments so we already have access level return type what's a return type int because it's it wants a number of days name it gives us the name, it tells us right there, get days, get days, arguments, it tells us right there, it has an open parenthesis and a close parenthesis, so arguments is none, right, and that's going to be what our method is going to look like, and uh, so what does this method need to do, mm. okay, so, if uh, month num equals two, let's just do if month num equals two. Uh, what do we do? Month num. Let's call it right here. Int um, string month name. Okay. And in the initialization of the constructor, we do month name. Okay, let's just call. We just call get days in here. Okay, so the method get days is the one that's going to initialize the string month name. Um, actually, I don't even know what I'm thinking. We don't need any of this stuff. Why well, I'm overcomplicating this stuff right here? Okay, so if month num equal equals two, what do we need to do? Return twenty eight. Bam. If month num equal equal, uh, so we have uh, September, April, June, and November. <coughs> April is four. Month num equal equal four or month num equal equal nine for September. Uh, let's change this so it's properly capitalized. Or month 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 num equal equal nine. Nine. Or uh, so we have April, June six. Month num equal equal six. Or November was the other one. Month num equal equal November. If all of that return thirty. Okay. Um, let's handle a case here, an exceptional case here first. If month num is greater than twelve, or month num is less than one, we return. 
zero. You know that month has is invalid. Okay, and um, so once we've done that, we checked for error. Now we if month num is two is February we return twenty eight, and if month num is one of these months which have thirty days we return thirty. So we've covered every case except the months that have thirty one days. So you know since all that's left to cover is that we just do return thirty one and we are done with this problem that's it and that would be full credit but I want to check that it compiles and I'm gonna write a class month no class month uh, okay and it does compile good to go and that is it